Hey, good morning, YouTube. This is Dr. Wanda. So I decided since last week's chats were so well received, I said this is Monday and I'm going to return with another chat. Okay, if I have something to say, I'm going to share it with you. And this time I want to talk to you about citizenship or seeking residency or this whole illusion that Ghana gives um, that they were putting out with the year of the return that you could come and get your dual citizenship and, and be able to go back and forth from this nation to the U.S. seamlessly. And I'm here to tell you that it's not as simple as they make it seem. So here I am in this country. Now I've been here 10, 11 months this time. Previously it was four months and then I had the one week. So anytime you're even trying to consider residency, you need at least one year. Now they are flexible. It doesn't have to be a continuous year, but the amount of time that you spent in the country needs to amount to at least a year, okay? All right, so that's separate from that dual citizenship application, which has its own process, and you can go online and walk through it. But I can tell you to date, or at least when I first came here with the year of the return, there was about maybe 126, 136 people that actually received their citizenship, two of which I know. Um, and one of them was a very well-known woman, Rita Marley, the um, ex-wife of Bob Marley. She received her citizenship, and she had been here forever. So that should give you an idea of how slow and um, sort of bureaucratic the process is. It's not as quick as you would think, okay? So um, recently, because I've extended my passport now, I've extended it twice. So in fact, we're set to go later this week to pick it up. We are talking about the year residency and sort of uh, moving it ahead. Now, anytime you go into these offices, you'll have some people that if you pay them a certain amount, that's just how this country works, if there's a little bit of bribery there, they can, they can move your photo along, or you can um, stand in, 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 in your own integrity if, that's, if that bothers you, and you can just get in line, and when it's your turn, you step up and you see what you're working with. So they do tell you the requirements for residency. So I just want you to know what some of the requirements are. One, you have to have an application letter requesting residency. They want two photo IDs from your passport. They want you to have a copy of a, of a bank statement if you have it. They want, if you have a child with you, um, and you, it's, you know, like I'm traveling with Gia alone. Her father is back in the U.S. I would need a letter of consent for my child. They want a copy of that child's birth certificate. I travel with those things with Gia. Um, they want two guarantors. They want two Ghanaian folks with passports that function as a guarantor. These are people that are willing to rep for you. They're saying, like, look, I know her. I know him. He good people. She good people. Yes. They want a copy of your marriage certificate. If you're married, you want a copy of that, a copy of the marriage certificate, a letter of support from the principal guarantor. So the principal guarantor for me would be my husband, Isaac. For someone else, it would be somebody else, whoever invited you to come, who gave you the, the original invite. And then they want you to um, have some, si some type of Ghana non-citizen identification card or, or and Sign, they want you to sign a bond form at the immigration office. Now, the next time we go, the one gentleman suggested that we, my, me and my husband, we just sign a bond and I'm able to get my year residency um, and skip some of the processes. I've told him that that's fine, but I, would, I want to be prepared to go through the processes because I like peace. Okay, everything that glitters is not gold. And sometimes when you cut these deals, you know, you get burned on the other end. So that's one. If you're doing any type of residency, or if you're trying to get citizenship, what they're really asking for is the same thing that the U.S. is asking for. They want to know what you're made of. They want to know what contributions, what goodwill, what decency, what charitable efforts, what type of citizen are you? They're looking at citizenship issues. And so that's really kind of hard to gauge if you're just visiting a country. You know, um, some of us come, I see people come and they have a school that they want to donate book bags to, or they have an orphanage they're connected with, or maybe there is um, a huge ministry here that they function with. All of that 
goes into a portfolio of sorts that speaks to your character. And they're going to want to see some sort of uh, proof of that. That's why they want the letters. I'm going to tell you to really protect yourself. So you need to keep copies or you need to keep pictures of the things that you do. And don't do it feeling like, you know, that it somehow is less charitable or it's less godly or less kind. No, it's, it's good sense. You know, you need to toot your own horn. You need to speak up for yourself because you would be surprised that as kind as you are, as decent as you're conducting yourself, the people that you would think would speak up for you may not feel like they can do it or don't have the words to say it or just don't want to. And um, other people would have been willing had they had you actually considered involving them. So the first time I came here, uh, the second trip, I held a health fair in my husband's village. I, helped, I organized a health fair. There was a nurse that I was connected with. She wanted to come to Africa with me. And I know that I'm a, I can be a little bit of a, a larger than life personality. And I didn't want her to feel like everything is Dr. Wanda, Dr. Wanda, Dr. Wanda. So I organized a health fair because she not only was a professional nurse, she also was a nurse educator and she had her own private um, mobile nurse um, business. So I said, let's do something where I can stand in my, in, my, in my light, you stand in your light, we come together and we shine together. So that was the heart behind the health fair. Well, once they came to Africa, it all fell apart, and I ended up doing the health fair by myself, okay? Another time, another story, we're not going to get off into that. In any case, as a result of that, because I was organizing what I called the G3 tour, it was a tour of various points in Ghana where I was giving service. A school reached out to me, the school of the deaf, and they explained to me that some of their young people were being struck by cars off this particular road. And I asked them, did they have signage? Because the, the kids can't hear. And people seeing people walk on the road don't necessarily know if they're being arrogant or testing you know, the streets. I said, do you have signage? They said, no. So we donated signage. We just got a couple of really big yellow signs that said, hey, death in the area, death near. And so that was part of the tour. We stopped there and we handed that off. We had another school that reached out to me and they said, hey, this is um, out of Nakusi. This is a waterlogged area. Okay, And because of that, these are rice growers. These children go to a school where lots and lots of mosquitoes are there. So I'm not an expert on mosquitoes, but you know, part of what a person that gets a PhD is, is a researcher. You learned how to do research. So I did a lot of research to tell them all the different strategies from every angle that they could use to fight mosquitoes. So everything from applicable things to mosquito catchers, to, to soap, to uh, what you do, which, which blood types, because apparently, oh, you know, they, they always gonna bite you and are they are they not interested in okay um that there's all these things and it has to be holistic that uh dragonflies are actually our friend they eat a bunch a bunch a bunch a bunch of, of mosquitoes um and beer is our enemy apparently um they can smell it coming out the skin that that um carbon that carbon that, that C, co2 and it makes them absolutely bite you so um, all of this was just stuff to kind of empower them and teach them. So that was part of the tour. Uh, the tour consisted of um, not only teaching them that. Uh, it was another, what, what was our other location? Um, we went out to, uh, oh, where was my other location? I got to look at the, you know, that's a sad thing. Oh, we went to um, um, Lalonia, and that's where I actually installed um, the first library, because now I'm a library planter, I do the mini libraries, but at that time, I did the bigger library. That was my first library. Let me see if I'm, I'm trying to find a picture of it to show you of, of the library, and I'm very proud of that. Um, okay, let's see if you can see. Uh, books. Books. Yeah, so I installed a, a library out there in that school. That was the school in the village. That village is attached to my husband. It was the first village in Ghana I went to, and so they didn't have a library, and I collected them 100 black books. So these are black authors, black themes, black thoughts, black people, black, all of it. 
and um, and all of it's meant to um, encourage them to read their own people, but also to to lift um, their self esteem, their self worth, and their self efficacy. So that was part of the tour. Another part. Um, of the tour it consisted of going out to Kamasi. I was invited out there to uh, what is basically like Kente cloth land, and there was a particular um, spot where I assisted with book bags. That, that was the part where they had an activity center for some of the kids in the community, and I was able to drop that off. Now, I'm not sharing all that to toot my own horn, although I'm tooting my own horn. I'm sharing all that to say that at, last year I added a scribe to my visit, and it probably was the best thing I ever did because normally I do stuff and I, I take myself serious, but I don't take myself as serious as I should. So this time I said this tour was huge and it felt big to me and it felt, you know, like you need to document what it is you're doing. So he put together a photo book and he documented it. It can be bought. It's actually on uh Amazon and it's caught titled G3 Documentary Photo Book Stories of a Health Fair in Ghana. And so it follows my whole tour from the radio interviews to, let's see what I can show you, to the uh, library installation, um, going out to the, uh, oh, that's more of that, let's see, um, to dealing with the deaf. You see that? Yep, to giving them that. Uh, being out in Kente Cloth Land, that's me with the chief. Uh, you know, just everything was documented. And so, who would know that I would use that book as part of a way to work on my citizenship here? Because in spite of all the effort I put out into Lalonia and the work I've put there, believe it or not, I've never gotten a letter of thanks from the community. I've never, I, I requested a letter to just say, um, you know, once I knew what the, what, the, what the stipulations were for citizenship, I said to my husband, I said, ask them to write me a letter, the schoolmaster or the chief of the school, which they were very, very happy and pleased with me, so that I can have that letter when I go and I apply for citizenship. This one can't write. This one's phone is dead. This one, um... He, he, he's, he's, um, he's traveling. So much of this Abbott and Costello stuff goes on in Africa where this one ain't got, he don't have access to a printer. Um, this one says, come this date. This one's going to pick it up. This one didn't see it. This one's not asked picking his phone. And so I said, my God, had I not documented all of that stuff, like in a, in a tangible, simple way to show this country that, yeah, I'm here not only on goodwill, but yes, my yeah, you, you you're getting you're getting a quality citizen. Yeah, I'm definitely about the progress of this country. You never have to worry about me being involved in any crime. I I I would be struggling. So I'm saying this to you. Many of you are gonna come and and host, and it doesn't have to be what I do. Maybe it's just that you you know run one of the best camps, the best Bible circles. You you're somebody that does intensive work with girls, intensive work with boys, you're, you're a giving um, um, artist, you're a, a master cook and you serve, whatever it is, I'm going to say to you, if you're seeking citizenship or if you're going for your residency, it is smart to hold those artifacts to speak on behalf of your character because that's the main thing, that's the main thing that they're looking for. Know the address you're staying Know the person that's guaranteeing you in this country. Have you two people, even if it has to be out of the set of people that invited you, that you feel like handle this King's English well enough, can express themselves well enough, that they can write those letters for you so that you have your guarantors in this country. Now, next week we're going. Or if, if, if we could go later this week, we'll go. And I'll come back to you and I'll let you know if I get... Uh, my, my one year residency okay and what I'm also looking forward to is my Ghanaian passport I don't necessarily have to have the dual citizenship one thing I'll tell you I have a girlfriend who married a Nigerian and I was actually jealous of her she married a Nigerian and they have some process that they call a Naira wife so as a wife 
She has a special identification card where she can travel back and forth from the U.S. to see her husband at any time without, <coughs> excuse me, without, without applying for anything. I want to be able to do that. I want to be able to come back and forth. But I also want my uh, Ghanaian passport because I'm a Pan-Africanist. I would like to freely travel the continent. I would like, to tr I would like the power of traveling the continent with my African passport without all the rigmarole. So um, I know for sure I can do all the West African countries, but I actually believe the passport would afford me to do the other nations as well. Not sure, but I think so. So that's my message for you today. Um, look into the one-year one residency. Definitely look into um, your citizenship. Understand that dual citizenship, being able to have the right to go back and forth and live in both nations without declining the other nation is not a simple process. They're not, they're not, they're not, as much as they've yelled about the year of return, they're not over here processing a lot of people. They're really not. It's actually a, a very misleading um, call. Very misleading. They make it seem like if you want to be here and you're here and you're doing right by and you and you and you and you, and you, you get up and you give your pledge, you're in. It's not. It's a long. It's a long process. Some people have been in, in that process actually for years. So happy Monday. Peace and progress with the rest of your week.